Hey everyone, I'm the 13th Wolfman. You know what? Uh, some of you may know this, some of you may not know this. When Blockbuster went out of business, I picked up seasons 1, 2, and 3 of Mad Men. And season 5, but that's neither here nor there. This is about seasons 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, I picked up seasons 1, 2, and 3 of Mad Men on DVD. They were 99 cents a, a season. I'd never watched the show whatsoever and figured, what the hell? I pick it up, but one day I might watch it. If I don't, it's only 99 cents a season. So, like I said, I picked them up. I put them all in this this case that I had. To, you know, it holds all three seasons. It's a 12 disc case, is what it is. And so, like I said, it holds all three seasons. I'm gonna, I'm working on a new cover for it. But what this is about is, this is a review of, this is a review of the first three seasons of Mad Men. So I started watching it last week, and I thought, well, this is kind of a cool show. But what really sets it off is the ensemble of the cast. This, the, the characters in the cast are incredible. Um, the characters themselves, you got you got Don Draper, who basically he works for Sterling Cooper, which is an ad agency. But he, in a way, it, in his own way, in his own little world, he basically runs the place because he's in charge of everything. He's in charge of all the creative stuff. When I say everything, Don's married to Betty. They have two kids, and Betty is. She's not a prude. She's just off. Every, you know, the whole thing takes place in the 1960s. And it's it starts out in 1960. And the whole thing... Betty's just off. Betty, Betty's off. She's not really happy being a housewife. She used to be a model. She thought, well, I'll get back into that. She wasn't really happy with doing that. So she's just not happy. You know? Um, you got the characters at the office. you got... Uh, I refer to him as a little douche, but um, Pete Campbell, who is young and eager and just wants to wants to please the world, but and, and thinks he knows exactly how the world runs, you know. And he's just kind of like I said, he's kind of a douche at, at the beginning, you know. You, you got Freddie Rumson, um, and one of the one of the copywriters. You got Ken Cros Cosgrove, another copywriter. You got Sal Romano, and he's the head of the art department. Then you got Roger Sterling and Burt Cooper. And Burt Cooper and Roger Sterling's father, Roger Sterling Sr., started Sterling Cooper. Roger is a character all into himself. I mean, this this show is really interesting because, it, like I said, it takes place in the 60s, and everybody smokes, everybody drinks. I, I swear to God, I, this show probably turned a lot of people into alcoholics. The amount of lick... I, I, I joked about this the other night. I was thinking, wow, the show was on for seven years. It's basically an ad for alcohol for like seven years. I mean, the amount of... It's not real alcohol. We all know that they're like drinking, you know, iced tea and stuff like that. But, oh my God. Every time someone walks into an office, they first thing they do is make themselves a drink. You know they'll they'll go to a, they'll go to a meeting and they'll have like five or six drinks and just be three sheets to the wind and go back to work and it's like wow there's a lot of alcohol in this movie or in this TV show. The other thing is is that the '60s, the '60s itself play is a character in this in this TV series. The whole thing is that in the background and I I've. I think this is really interesting. In the background, whether it's on the radio, whether it's in the whether it's in the newspaper, or whether it's on television, there's always something something happening in the background to tell you roughly around what time of the year it is. You know, Marilyn Monroe's suicide in 1962, Kennedy's assassination in 63, the death of Medgar Evers, um, just you know, the I have a I have a, a dream speech by by MLK. You know, all this stuff is going on, and, and they use clips of this stuff, you know, on TV, and, and uh, it's so, like I said, it the time period is a character unto itself, 
you know, uh, as a character unto the show also, you know. Is this show good? Yeah, this show is really interesting. If you haven't watched Mad Men, I say I highly recommend it. Uh, it's not an action. It's not action, you know, but a lot of stuff happens, and it's really interesting. I honestly, I haven't gotten, I've gotten through seasons one through three. I'm working on season four, and I haven't even, I'm not, I, don't, I think I'm going to take a break for five and six. I don't have season seven yet, so I don't know how it ends, you know. For those who, for those who don't know how it ends, please, no spoilers. Um, Don Draper, the main character in the show, is an enigma. He he goes through these these fits, or these bouts of depression, or and it's just really weird. I I know that in the first season, somebody said something and about a product that they're trying to they're trying to you know advertise and. In the back of his head, he's like, what do women want? And that went on for like three episodes, you know, because he was just... But it, it's just these really weird bouts. It's not really depression, it's just kind of like... He gets ultra serious all of a sudden out of nowhere, and... I don't know, it's just really weird. He all... It, it, it's an interesting show, I say check it out, uh... There's a lot of infidelity on the show. Everybody's sleeping with everybody, pretty much. You know, um, <laughs> married, not married, whatever. It's the 1960s, you know, legs in the air. It's a, sounds like a good time. It probably was at the time. But yeah, so Mad Men, I mean, I honestly would think that it, if you could get through the first two seasons, then you can get, you can get through probably the whole, the whole run, the whole seven years. You know, like I said, right now I'm in I'm in uh, season four, and that takes place in 1965. So every year they're doing something. And that was the weird thing is like so. See, season three ended at the end between 1963 and 1964, and I was thinking, wow. So season four, you know, when we jump into it and we come back, it's going to be the Beatles, uh, the Ed Sullivan show, all this stuff. You know, the big British invasion. And they skipped right over that. They when they came back in season four, it was October, September or October of '64. So the Beatles have already been here. The whole Ed Sullivan thing, the British invasion had already happened. You know, um, it's like okay, well, that was that was one little letdown, but. I mean, so much happened in the 60s. They'll, they'll cover everything else. What would I give this? Uh, do I find this entertaining? Yes, I find this highly entertaining. Um, what would I give this for entertainment? I would give this easy. I mean, for the first three seasons, three and three quarter chainsaws. There are a few little things. I mean, I would give it four chainsaws, but there are a few little things that kind of drove me nuts, but that's just me. So... Three and three quarter chainsaws out of four, you know. Uh, I say check it out if you if you have it on Netflix or if you if you know someone has all the the seasons, you know, borrow them or whatever. But yeah, check out Mad Men. I I can't say enough about it. With that, you know what? I'm the Thirteenth Wolfman, and I'm on the prowl.